This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. Is there something going on here in this county where people are just not being held accountable? Those in power not being held accountable that has created what at least on the outside looks like almost some sort of like a cabal of, of people that are all working together for whatever specific agenda they want to go down. In this case, it seems they, they want Richard Allen to be the one that is the killer, whether or not he did it or not. And they seem to be stacking the cards very much uh, against him. Is that really what we're seeing? Is, is that the reality of this? Or is this all just one bizarre coincidence that these things are coming into play this way? Well, interestingly, of course, this case originated in Carroll County. Mm -hmm. And because of the judge's, you know, relationship and things and what I think he, well, his write-up was very interesting. Anyway, he recused himself. And that's why Judge Gohl was given the case. I think everybody involved was celebrating, thinking, okay, good, we have somebody outside of Carroll County, we have somebody that's going to take a fresh look of eyes. And then look at what has been done now. The two appointed attorneys that she's just added, those attorneys are from the same area where the jury pool is going to be selected, and they're all over television. So, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me. Plus, they're supposed to be under a gag order. So the whole thing is you're bringing up, it's just one instance after another that just doesn't seem right. And who's celebrating in all of this? Because now Judge Gohl has thrown out all the paperwork that was filed previously by Rosie and Baldwin, including the Franks hearing Mm -hmm. motion. So now we don't have these officers that are going to be scrutinized and who have been accused of just egregious, you know, really just poor investigation. Uh, at every turn. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, that was going to be under the microscope and now it's not. And that's a huge win for, for Tony Liggett and the uh, sheriff's office there to not be under that scrutiny and to see how it all connected with the court system just seems extremely bizarre. Are we going to see those issues come back up into another Frank's hearing let's say the new attorneys get in here, they get established and they go back down this road because those are clear violations that really need to be addressed. Well, they should be. And I'll be interested to see what motions they're going to put forth. I also want to see if they followed the defense strategy that was presented by Rosie and Baldwin. If they don't, oh my gosh, what a mess again this is going to be. Because they put forth, you know, 130 plus pages saying, listen, this is how we think it went down. Do I believe in this Odinism theory? No, I'm not buying into it. But I think they were on their way to at least evoking some possible reasonable doubt in terms of, you know, just the whole Odinism issues that they're bringing forward that people really had to, you know, walk their way through and at least look at seriously. It it, it makes you really wonder what is at play because, yeah, the Odinism things, those were almost too extreme when you you looked at them on the surface. Some of them kind of went down some roads a little bit, and then you kind of stop and go, yeah, this kind of goes a little bit too far. But when you have all of these things coming together, it really starts to make you wonder, maybe not Odinism, but what is going on here in this county that they're allowing uh, all of these interworkings to take place that really work very much against Richard Allen. It also makes you wonder about other cases in that county. It makes you wonder about justice in general and how they handled other accusations in cases beyond uh, just the these murders. Well, and that's such a great point, because is that the reason that they're fighting so hard on this case to not have the Franks hearing? Because really, you're opening up a can of worms uh, the minute you find uh, issues um, Brady issues or Giglio issues Mm -hmm. with the officers involved, if indeed they are found, oh my gosh, now you're going to have to go back to a multitude of other cases and complaints and look at them much more seriously. In some ways, that kind of reminds me of what we're looking at possibly with the Alec Murdoch case and Becky Hill. We don't know exactly how legitimate those arguments are yet that she tampered with the jury. 
But again, whether you love him or hate him, and I think most of us are in the hate him camp of Alec Murdoch being a despicable human being, if his rights were violated there too, that's not how we do things here. He'd be entitled to a new trial as well. But then again, if we do find out that in that case, if Becky Hill had been doing that opens up that same door to however many cases she was involved in as well and what ethical standards are violated there. Exactly. And it really, what we're talking about, the point isn't whether Richard Allen is guilty. It's not whether Alex Murdoch is guilty. It's our system. Mm -hmm. And is the system treating the individuals fairly? There is no doubt, no matter what happens, if the Supreme Court comes in and says, listen, he has the right, Richard Allen has the right to choose his own representation if they're willing to represent him, which they are, he should get his own representation. If they come in and say that, I still think there's going to be a, a mess because Goal, if she continues to preside over this, has said she wants him out. And you know what's interesting too, Tony? What? We really don't know why because everything was done in camera. They're afraid to say too much, as you've seen in the mm -hmm. filings, other than we were coerced, which is very general. Yeah. They're, not, she's not get, they're not getting into exactly what was said to them. And then now the cameras are out of the courtroom. So as the public, we don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And let's talk for a moment also about the leaks, the whole reason why the attorneys were forced out by the judge initially because of the evidence leaks, because specifically it looks like it was those images that were leaked out of that office with, we don't really have any reasoning why other than we hear it was a friend that took some pictures and they got out somehow. That to me just seems very bizarre. It's not completely unplausible that someone would do that sort of thing for uh, attention or to make some money uh, in a very wrong way. But we don't know much more about it other than that's the explanation. Why don't we know more about what exactly happened there uh, in the uh, the office there of Brad Rossi and Andrew Baldwin? Well, certainly that's their position, mm -hmm. is that this individual, he took the pictures, then he gave them to another individual, and that individual gave them to three different podcasters. And fortunately, those podcasters did not post any of yeah. them. They've been disseminated about, but fortunately, in a sense, I would say no harm, no foul from the standpoint of, thank goodness, mm -hmm. they haven't gotten out to any jury pool or really anybody mm -hmm. except for these very specific people. So, and one of those individuals is deceased because he killed himself yep. right after he was interviewed. So in yeah. any event, for that to be the reason that you kick off counsel on such an important case and really set the case back at least a year, if not more, while these new attorneys now start looking through all this discovery and start making their motions. We're a year out while Richard Allen is sitting in solitaire confinement in a maximum security prison. Yeah. And for all intents and purposes, very much rotting away. I'm really starting to wonder, will he make it all the way to October of next year with the new trial date? Just it, with his own health. Is he, is he going to survive long enough in prison either that way or, or is, could something else possibly happen to him Stranger thing, I, it, so many strange things have happened here already. Nothing would surprise me. Nothing would surprise me. And I know there are apologists out there saying, oh, listen, there's no way a county uh, can handle him, a county jail. That is the most ridiculous argument. If they don't want it to be Carroll County, which I have talked to a former jailer there that said there is absolutely would have been no problem. And they, in fact, have had other people that they've had in solitary confinement there. There's not a monetary issue because right now that county is paying, the, footing the bill for him to be in a state institution. So every month they're annying up thousands of dollars for that incarceration of him over there. So if they just say they didn't have the personnel or that's what they're saying, you know, to hire another deputy, it would be less than what they're going to spend incarcerating him in a state prison over there. And in Carroll County or any of those county jails, he would have access to a phone. He would access, have access to a television. He would not be around the worst of the worst, most dangerous individuals that are incarcerated in Indiana. 
Yeah. He I, would be around drunks and, you know, people that have violated, you know, curfews and trespassing and, you know, normal crimes like that. Yeah. Not necessarily someone who would be out to to kill someone who has been accused of, of a obviously horrible crime. But I think your odds are better of violence against you in a maximum security prison than they would be in the county jail. I mean, and if every other county in the country can handle this, why not them? When you look at this from a, a speculative uh, perspective and you try to to put some of this together, where has your mind gone? Obviously, Odinism does seem uh, quite extreme, but what do you think is happening here? Is it just one person started covering for another and then another and another, and it just kind of kept snowballing into what we see today? Or is there something much bigger going on here that is trying to be protected and this is what we end up with on the surface. Well, I don't even have to really speculate because there are documents that are in the judicial realm that show that there were egregious missteps on how that crime scene was handled initially, on how evidence was handled. And because of that, I think the individuals involved with all of that want to conceal what happened. They're embarrassed. And that's the reason why this case wasn't cracked by them until extremely late, all these years later. And I think that's what it comes down to, is really their missteps that they're trying to cover up. And I think that's why we're seeing some of the things we're seeing. And then the truth be damned and whoever, you know, did this, is whoever did this, but we're going to go down this road because we think that we've already dug in this far. How do we get out now, it seems? Well, it, and it could be Richard Allen. You know, I'm hearing oh, yeah. some more evidence come out that is concerning. Obviously, the, the biggest concern are the five confessions, mm -hmm. you know, that they say he said. Of course, again, there's a reason for that, potentially, as he was in these deplorable conditions. And was he losing his mind at the same time he was eating paper, supposedly or, or reportedly? So, but in any event, it doesn't matter in my eyes if he's guilty or innocent because this is going to be appealed ad nauseum because yeah. whether he's found guilty or found innocent because of the Sixth Amendment right that is being trampled on, in my opinion. At the end of the day, I mean, this in a sick, weird way may end up benefiting him if he is, uh, in fact, found guilty because there's going to be so much room on appeal for everything that's going on right now. Uh, it, it won't be ignored. Exactly. It won't be ignored. And it's just one thing after another. I mean, to me, they're going to appeal, obviously, how he was treated in terms. I, I can't find one other person. And I, I've even reached out on Twitter asking, please let me know if you know one other case. So all the police officers, federal agents, attorneys that are on Twitter, not one person can point out where somebody has been thrown into a maximum security solitary confinement situation without being convicted. And even if found innocent, a life that has been uh, turned upside down, ruined for all intents and purposes, uh, hopefully, you know, that justice is served if it is him, if it's not. But at the end of the day, th this could have, you know, so many of these things could have been prevented to try and, and find the answer to that question without uh, the bizarre road that we've gone down thus far. Right. Real quick, Tony, I want to say I am so glad that Brian Koberger is getting his eyebrows tr trimmed, his hair, you know, the little goo, goo they put on your hair mm -hmm. there. You know, he's in a beautiful suit. He's getting his vegan diets. He's getting to go to church. You know why? Because there's no way if he's found guilty that at least that can be any part of the appeal process. He's well represented by four attorneys. I say, bring on more if you want, mm -hmm. because that's what we're talking about is really protecting the process yeah. so that when a conviction occurs, it's there's nothing to that has any teeth on the appeal. And so I'm at, I'm at least glad to see Brian Koberger is being appropriately treated for that reason. Sick of the ads? We are too. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.